Okay, so that's kind of a general description of what branches are. I mean, usually you're not gonna be kind of multiplying sets of numbers, um, but now I'll show you when um, this uh, same kind of logic can come in handy in terms of creating form or working with geometry in Rhino. So instead of creating a series of numbers, I'm just gonna create an array of points. So what I'm gonna do now is create a point. And for this, I'm going to use the construct point node. And this will let me uh, create a node by inputting the X and Y and Z Cartesian uh, parameters. So for this, I'm gonna keep the defaults, which are all zero, which will give me the point at the origin. You can see it previewed here. And then to create multiple copies of this point, I'm basically going to move it a series of times. So I'm gonna to go to my transform tab, pick the move command. Uh, I'm gonna pass my geometry into the move command. Here I need a series of vectors that describe the translation. You see defaults is 0, 0, 10. So this is a movement of 10 values up. I have both my original point and the moved point. So it's kind of a, a creating a copy. And I can set one vector to create one copy, or I can set a number of vectors to create multiple points. And to define the vectors, I'm going to specify first a um, unit vector to, uh, along which I want the points to move. And here I'll just type in Y to get the unit Y vector. These vectors are also in your vector tab here. So this by default will be a vector of unit one going in the Y direction. So if I plug this in here, you can see that I'm moving one unit along the Y axis. And the factor takes in either one or a series of numbers, which will create a series of, of unit of uh, vectors in the y direction of different lengths specified by the number. So for this, I'm going to copy my series from before. This can be useful um, here as well. So remember, the series created a list of values from zero to ten, uh, from zero to nine. If I plug that in here. Now it's made ten copies of my point, each time moving one more unit in the y direction. So now I have this series of points. I'm gonna copy this whole uh, piece here. Um, so this is exactly the same thing. But in this case, I'll just make one dif uh, difference and I'm just gonna change where the initial point is located. I'm gonna create a slider that's uh, four units. I'm gonna plug that into the X. So now my initial point started at four zero and it's been moved um, 10 times in the y direction. So now I have this collection of points and say I want to uh, draw lines between these points. So I have this list of 10 points and this list of 10 points. To connect them with lines I can use the line node and I want to use this one up here. Okay so line will uh, allow me to plug in two points that will define the endpoints of a line and just like before if I plug in a straight list of points it's gonna interconnect each of those points with lines. So here I'll just hide my grid so you can see this better. So you can see what it's done. Uh, it's taken each point and one by one connected each one in a row. Um, so now we can investigate a few more nuances of these data structures. Say that here, instead of having 10 and 10 points, so this equal matching of points, we had less points in one, uh, in one of the sets. So here I'll just drag this down to five, you can see what happens. It basically goes down the list, but when it runs out of values in one of the lists, it'll basically use that same value to complete this list, here, this list here. And this is also a standard way that it handles data. And it works both ways. Uh, if I have 10 points here, but five points here, it's gonna work the same way, okay? But again, um, if I want to, to interconnect all these points in a kind of permutation, um, all I would have to do is graft one of these data uh, into the next series of branches, and then it's gonna take each one of those branches and perform the operation on the whole set of other points. So here I'll just take my first set and I'll graft it up. You can see now I'm getting my permutation and this is gonna work no matter how many points are in each set. Okay, and the last point I'll make is uh, what happens if I graft both? So here, I'll graft both data sets. So now I have separate branches from each point coming from both data sets. You can see that goes back to the original um, way of operating where it'll take branch by branch 
uh, and since I only have one point in each branch, um, it's gonna match those up uh, one by one.